everybody this is going to be an update of my former video about this because with the newest update they did change the perfectly tuned cooler oc into the tuned cooler overclock in my opinion the nerf to the perfectly tuned overclock was pretty good as it was clearly the best of the options the other ones like flow rate expansion or improved thermal efficiency i believe it's called uh, are good but if you had perfectly tuned cooler there was really no other reason to run anything else unless you were running a damage build so you would probably run ice storm uh, if you had all the overclocks or for instance there just wasn't a lot of variance between them in my opinion so the nerf uh, is fine is is totally fine uh, and it's not even really that bad of a nerf it's just a slight one which which puts it in line with the other ones like uh like i said flow rate expansion and, and improved thermal efficiency uh, those are pr pretty much on the same tier, uh, but Tune Cooler still is probably the best one as it's the one that allows you to get to 10 freezing power the e easiest. You don't have to sacrifice as much in build that you do with Tune Cooler like you might with the other ones. Um, so for if you're going for freezing power 10, if you're going for the best freezing build, it's still probably Tune Cooler. So to discuss the nerf briefly, they delay the turbine response time by 0.2 seconds, bringing the charge time up to 0.7 seconds. This is not that bad of a nerf. Uh, it is somewhat noticeable that it's slightly slower, um, so you could consider changing up your build slightly to accommodate for this. I don't think you should, because the first tier of freezing power is probably the best one to go with, as the fourth tier uh, modifications for uh, tuned cooler give damage or... Uh, ammo which is probably preferable in this case but really it's up to you we'll discuss that more as a, as i get there also the pressure chamber refills at a slower rate so it's kind of like reload speed uh, with the pressure gain rate is now at 80 percent instead of 100 percent once again not a bad nerf there there you know it really is a balanced overclock with the extra freezing power and the increased flow rate it's still pretty much the best one in my opinion uh except for damage builds for damage build the ice storm is clearly the best one um, with maybe flow rate expansion or improved thermal efficiency coming in. Um, Ice Spear and Snowball, we can talk about that in another video. Those are just meme builds. Maybe good on Has 4 at the highest. I played Ice Spear on Has 5. I mean, it's fine. It's whatever. I just don't think it's that great. It's just kind of meh. Uh, but to get back to the topic of the video, Let's go over the gear modifications I would take now with the new update. For the first tier, you got larger pressure chamber, which is like magazine size. So it, it decreases the pressure drop rate to 33%. So that's just like having a larger magazine. So you can shoot for longer uh, before the uh, repressurization comes into effect. Then you also have the faster turbine speed up which uh, decreases it by 0.4 seconds, putting it at 0.3 seconds. So this totally counteracts the nerf. Uh, doesn't give you the previous value, which could get you pretty close to like instant uh, startup times uh, with your cryo cannon before, uh, but 0.3 seconds is pretty low. This is what I was talking about. You could decide to do this point. If you really do not like the change and you think the nerf is too much and you don't want to wait, consider doing this. I think that one thing you'll, you just have to practice with this new nerf is to start shooting a little bit earlier, especially with the second tier uh, going, I like to go overclocked ejection turbine, which increases the rate anyways. Uh, so they kind of go hand in hand. It's not that big of a nerf. So for me personally, if I want to get to 10 freezing power, then I'll take the first gear modification, which is stronger cooling unit. So for the second tier, like I said, I usually go overclocked ejection turbine. But uh, you could consider going with the ammo. 75 ammo is not a lot, uh, but if you combine it with, say, the fourth tier ammo, then you know you have a lot of ammo with this. This could be pretty good for you. Um, but with the reach, you'll be surprised at how far away you hit things with the reach. I mean, the extra five meters is pretty far and uh, helps you with all sorts of things like getting those stupid spitters that are up on walls, menaces, anything anything like that, it really helps you with. Shooting Macteras that are far away before they even get close to you. It just, it's all around better, in my opinion. I didn't used to think that until I started to use it and like read some people's thoughts on it, and it makes a lot more sense. With your beam, you can also hit more grunts or, or whatever's in front of you at the same time because the beam goes further. So instead of getting like six people or something like that, or six Glyphids, then you you can hit like nine or something like that. So that you know you're freezing larger waves with this. 
So I would go with overclocked ejection turbine. I don't really care about things like uh, the bypass and integrity check, which is the uh, overheating mechanic. It's okay, I just try my best to not do that. I know that's not like great advice or anything like that, but it's really just one of those like, just don't do that kind of things. Like, just don't, you know, overheat. The better you, d you know, of course you're gonna overheat every now and then, but it's just not that big of a deal for me to do that. Whereas the reach would like always be effective. So for the third tier, you've got refill the pressure chamber faster, which could be good, but you know, that's like reload rate. Um, or so adding 60% to that is like a quicker reload. Um, pretty good, could be pretty good. That's really, that one's up to you. You can decide if that one works uh, for you. Personally, I'm gonna go with the increased flow volume, putting it at 130% flow rate, <clears throat> because this build we're trying to freeze people keep saying people because with this build we're trying to freeze these these stupid little freaking aliens as quickly as possible and so with the increased flow volume that's how you're going to accomplish that so the fourth tier is where it gets pretty exciting not really but whatever you can add three damage to your your stream of ice deadliness or you can add one freezing power uh which we as i've talked about and if you've looked in one of my older videos in the comments a uh, nice commenter points out why 11 freezing power is bad and it's math isn't that fun so math says 11 is bad and a waste especially for larger things mostly because it just adds very little and you're saving very little ammo so the best choice for the third tier or fourth tier that is is to probably take larger reserve tank because you're getting 150 extra you know Bio cannon juice or whatever the crap this is so you know you got some choices in there if you really don't care what i have to say i don't know why you're doing why you're even watching this video but you could take the freezing power to get the 11 um you could do the damage if you want i think the damage is completely fine uh the big problem is for me is that i get a little trigger happy with the cryo cannon and then i realize i have no freaking ammo i feel like i run out of ammo super super fast with the cryo cannon when i use it and I just really want to freeze things. I mean, this is a utility build to help your team out. You know, if you got a gunner with an auto cannon or something like that, utility, like the, the utility of this build is insane. And the ice field is similar to the CRISPR where, you know, if you're getting swarmed by the stupid little swarmers, you can still shoot at the ground and they'll freeze and they'll die immediately. So you may not be able to do a lot of damage all the time, but you're providing so much to your team. So much. Freezing Praetorians, freezing Dreadnoughts. I mean, not well dreadnoughts occasionally or bulks things like that like you're doing a great service to your team even if you're not doing all the damage even if at the end of the game you're third in kills or something like that uh it doesn't matter that you are required as a as a crowd cannon driller, driller you are very important to your team so that's why i generally will take the larger reserve tanks so i can do this for longer and with the final tier is where you can get some kind of some damage uh going Technically, with Fragile, which is the one where they will spontaneously shatter if they're frozen, that's how you would do your most damage possible if you're going for highest burst DPS, I believe, because you can instantly kill certain things. Um, I've seen it kill all sorts of stuff. It, you just, they just have to get below a certain health value, I believe, and then it has a percentage chance based on, you know, all these things that uh, they'll explode or not which is pretty good. If you're wanting to kill things, this this will get you there quicker. Um, an enemy that's raised within five meters of you while you're fighting the crowd can start to freeze. I think that that is good if you're fighting against dreadnoughts. And like, if, you're, if you know for sure you're fighting against like the regular dreadnought, then uh, this one can be pretty good because that's probably the easiest one, to be honest. Um, and within five meters of you, you're gonna be shooting it like constantly. And it only works while you're shooting. So, if you want to freeze a Dreadnought a little faster on your elimination missions, consider taking Cold Radiance. Um, but it, it, de it depends on your play style because then that's kind of like wasting your 15 meter reach. Um, it just really depends on what you're doing. If you didn't take the 15 meter reach, consider taking Cold Radiance because you're going to be in closer contact with Glyphids a lot. Uh, so, totally viable. Totally viable. And with this new update, they've added a lot of things like Elite Glyphids that are much harder to kill, uh, you're really not going to be able to freeze them. I mean, maybe maybe 11 freezing power is the way to freeze elites, but you will probably not be able to do it. I think they're really trying to force like, a major team cooperation whenever you find elites, 
uh, because you could shoot an entire uh, tank at them and you won't, you, you, maybe you get 60, 75% of the way freezing on them. So you really are gonna need your scout. And uh, I mean, I guess that's it, just your scout to throw grenades if you want to actually freeze one of these things. Um, but really, with elites, they're still, you're still very useful because they're fast. They're really fast, and so you're gonna, I think you slow them down. I'll check on that before I put this up, I guess. Um, but if you do slow them down, then it's pretty useful for that. But, you know, the crowd cannon, the driller is always good. You're good for crowd control. You're, if you're using the flamethrower, you're clearing out hordes. You're using sticky flame builds uh, to slow down the waves, all sorts of things like that. Oh, you know, you're just a utility character a lot of the time. If you're playing Ice Storm, it's a little different, or, you know, Face Melter or something. It's a little different. Um, but... You're still getting to take advantage of the stuff that the the driller like the f flame walls and then the ice walls are all very good for just helping your team out another thing that we should probably discuss is the changes to the epc pistol um i feel like it got nerfed pretty i mean it was hard it was a it was a hard nerf i feel like it's a little bit harder to use now um it seems like every single uh first shot I do over overcharges. I'm going to keep working on that. Maybe I'm doing something kind of wrong. I know before uh, with EPC, we were running two all twos down the down the row. Uh, I think you have to slightly change it up or at least I've had to slightly change it up anyways. Um, I'm going to I'm going to keep testing this out, but it seems like you want to go two one two 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 two. Um, because with the heat pipe, uh, heat pipe, uh, they change it slightly where uh, charge shots generate more heat, less ammo consumed and faster charge rate. Um, still, I think is the right one to go. There's potential with heat pipe that you could also use magnetic cooling unit or even energy rerouting to pull off the EPC mining. I haven't tested those out, so maybe there's a better way to do it uh, right now. Um, but really the best for the mining is is still, you could probably still do all twos down the line. I feel like I'm overheating a lot more on my first hits. Uh, and you also notice when you're when you're actually accomplishing the, the mining portion that the mir minerals no longer fall down, they, they go everywhere, which I think is totally fine. Um, it, it makes the driller like less a jack of all trades kind of thing because it kind of made, if you got really good at it, which you could, you could get pretty good at it and you could be shooting those things all over the place. Um, and kind of make the scout and NG kind of useless. Uh, I didn't really feel that way when I was playing scout. I kind of like it occasionally because it allowed me to actually like shoot a little bit more. Uh, instead of when I play, I, it's more about getting things done as quickly as possible and getting all the minerals. So the driller is helping me with that from like long range. I'm totally cool with that because then I get to actually shoot my gun and, you know, play the pew pew game. Um, but this, you know, makes it a little bit, you know, it spreads it out. It spreads out the, the, the workload a little bit, which is good. Everybody's more involved now. So NGs now, they got to shoot plats, you know, a little bit more because it's a little bit more annoying to use the EPC mining pistol. I feel like they, they buffed a couple of things about this, um, about the pistol in general. So maybe we'll talk about some flying nightmare builds and such like that later. Um, I've tried it out. I didn't really care for it. I feel like the just the sidearms for the driller are just not great in the first place, which is fine. His, his you know, he's not really doing damage like the gunner and such. Um, he doesn't need fantastical sidearms like the, you know the NG. You know, the driller's whole kit is just really good, just really good. So it's fine for his pistols to be kind of lacking. But if you're wanting to do the build, then you still need to probably go two 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 or two one two two two. Uh, maybe in the third tier you can switch things up and, uh, you know, change that up, but I'd mostly go with that. Now, let's talk about the HE grenade buffs for a second. I've been running them on Has5, and I've been using, uh, Cryo Cannon with free, like, full freezing, so you'd think that throwing grenades into frozen batches of things would do a lot of work. Eh? I feel like the axes are still way, way better. Um, especially with the fact that they work together with uh, things like Vampire. Uh, just makes them so much more useful than the, than the other things. Um, I, I used to love Neurotoxin Grenade. I still do. I still find that as the other. You know, if you're running uh, Flamethrower, then I think you should run that. Unless you're running Vampire, then, then you have so many so many combinations of the impact axes that are really good. Um, 
So impact axe is always good. I don't think the HE grenade is that great. It is slightly better. It is slightly better. Um, so you can actually use it, and like I think it could be good if you do, if you just want to use grenades and blow things up. Um, totally worth it. Totally worth it. Um, I just think the impact axes are still better, and if I'm using a flamethrower, I'm still using toxin grenades over the HE grenades. I still maybe would use impact axe though. Oh yeah, with the uh, with that we've tried, we've gotten this a little bit shorter than normal. I'm trying to keep it all, you know. Nobody was watching all 40 minutes of those freaking videos, and that's totally fine. Uh, so we're going to get it all together into one thing. And, uh, you know, we can talk about builds a little bit, maybe in the perks. I've been changing up a little bit. I like to run Vampire. You know, I'm still running Iron Will and stuff like that. Um, I've been trying it out and trying See You in Hell a little bit. That's what the cryo candidate is, because when you're freezing things, you're going to be taking advantage of your pickaxe more often. Um, your drills when for weapons. Um, so I think it's totally a viable option is to run see you in hell even on has five and higher because uh, i mean you're, if you're going to use your melee if you like to use your melee that is you should run see you in hell occasionally maybe berserker i accidentally use berserker too many times uh, on accident and then it's just never up for me uh so but that could totally be good for some people hell you could run berserker and uh and see you in hell if you wanted to i just prefer iron will always but if you're wanting like a heavy melee build then that would totally work um but see you in hell is totally good because if you're dying, I, I think that the the active on your dead is pretty decent. Pretty decent. Um, there's lots of times when, you know, you're just going to get swarmed like crazy once you're dead and they can't pick you up. And you know, there's nothing they can do. And then you can just clear them all. You can clear all the stupid little freaking things on you. And it's, it's just perfect. I think it's great. But yeah, guys, uh, you know, I really appreciate you guys watching these. Uh, I did not think that, you know, I would get like a thousand views on any kind of video and you know any time soon like we had like 14 subscribers and just some from some of these videos at like at the time of the, this video being shot is 77 um that's just awesome you know uh, so i really appreciate you know everything you guys have done for the channel you know all the nice comments you guys have left uh, nobody's been rude so far so that's been uh, kind of cool i'm uh wondering if that's going to happen eventually that someone's going to they all sorts of terrible things to me but uh whatever so, but we appreciate you watching us, and uh, I hope I can keep making some good videos for you guys. I hope you guys come back. If you don't like the face cam, I'm sorry, you know, if this is really weird. Uh, I just thought, you know, I'd try it out. Hopefully you guys like it. See ya.